Apple's iPhone. Sophisticated design. Homegrown. Well, not exactly. The idea starts here, and the new iPhone's processor is made in Texas. But the battery, its display, and most of its other parts are made somewhere else. The iPhone has hundreds of different components, an estimated 90% of which are manufactured with help from workers in Germany, Singapore, Korea, Taiwan, China, and elsewhere. Now, outsourcing to China is a story you've heard before, right? You know, China has millions of unskilled workers willing to work for less than Americans. That's not new. But let's take a look at what happens when manufacturing is sent overseas. Take semiconductors, those tiny, essential components of any electronic device. Manufacturing semiconductors happens in three stages. Design, wafer fabrication, and assembly. In the 1960s, U.S. companies started sending low-skill aspects of assembly to Asia. Skilled wafer fabrication followed in the 1980s. And within the last decade, some complex design work has moved overseas as well. The point is that innovation requires relationships between design teams and factory workers. When low-skill jobs go overseas, it creates a vacuum that increasingly pulls higher-wage jobs abroad as well. And losing manufacturing jobs has other consequences, too. As American manufacturing has declined, our economy has lost what's known as a job multiplier. Let's look at some estimates from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. If America were to create 1,000 auto manufacturing jobs, suddenly, auto plants would start ordering more parts from other companies and hiring new managers. Those 1,000 new auto jobs would create other manufacturing jobs, new management jobs, transportation and warehouse jobs, scientific and technical service jobs, as well as various other work. All told, you would add 5,712 total jobs to the economy as a result. Now, Consider what happens if you add 1,000 new hospital jobs. More nurses, for instance, means you create other healthcare jobs, like nurse assistants and lab techs. You create other scientific and technical service jobs and various other positions, but only for a total of about 1,700 jobs. This effect shows up in the American economy right now, where Apple is a huge player. Earlier this year, the value of Apple in the stock market made it worth more than the biggest companies in oil, energy, and manufacturing. But Apple only has 43,000 American employees, a fraction of the nearly 400,000 workers that a company like General Motors employed a half century ago. Actually, if you look back at the largest employers in 1960, you had companies like GM and Ford and General Electric, big manufacturers. If you look at the biggest employers now, though, you have Walmart and Target and Kelly Services for temps. Big service firms. In other words, the fastest job growth in the American economy today falls into two groups. There are companies like Apple and other firms that hire highly skilled workers like software engineers and designers and pay them very high salaries. For a few elite workers, things are pretty good right now. And at the other end of the spectrum, the number of service jobs, like waiters and medical assistants, has also risen significantly. But wages for these jobs, on average, have been stagnant in the last decade. And the jobs in the middle, the work for everyone else, like salespeople and office assistants, steel workers and manufacturers, those jobs have increasingly disappeared. They've been replaced by robots or advances in technology, or they've been sent overseas. That's why our economic problems are so hard to solve right now, say economists. We've become a nation with fewer chances for people to climb into the middle class.